Hey there, it's Allison from OnlineTeacherAllison.com, where stay-at-home moms learn how to teach online so they can earn an income from home, even if their children are in tow. And today, I want to get into how online teaching or online learning affects students. And there's positive and there's negatives. So today, I'm just only going to address the positives. We'll get into the negatives next week because there are a ton of positives. So today, I'm going to get into that and... I hope it just really inspires you. For today, I really have no formal scientific evidence. So I wanna talk about the online learning of 2020. And people tend to cringe and have really negative feelings and emotions when you think about this because it was an awful time. I can't think of anybody who thought, yeah, 2020 was just overall a great year. When I look back on 2020, I think there were some ups and some positives, and one of them was learning how to teach you how to teach online. <laughs> but when I think about what was going on just worldwide, yeah, right? So when parents think about their students having to log in for, in some places, over an entire year. California, I know they were virtual learning for over a year. So when parents think about virtual learning and online teaching, that's kind of where they go. But this isn't where we're going today. If you caught last week's video, I did talk about what online teaching is and how there's two tiers. There's the tier where you are in the classroom, and then there's the tier where you and I fall in, which is the fun stuff. And if you want more information on it, go ahead and check it out. I've got it linked, and hopefully that clears that up for you. So no scientific evidence, just my observations, okay? as a non-classroom online teacher. We're not talking about the classroom. We are just talking about the extras that students do for home, from home because it's fun, because they want to, or because they're homeschoolers and they like the flexibility and that's the class they chose. It's, you have more choice here. So one of the biggest positives is it's a smaller class size. When I think about the classroom, um, my classrooms that I've had, I've had anywhere from like, 21 students-ish, I can't remember the exact number, to like 30-something. Those are massive class sizes. And when you think about the kids that really need that extra special attention, it's really hard to give it to them. Or you give them all that extra special attention and then the other ones don't get their extra special attention. So I do want to say right now, I recognize that online learning is not a good fit for every student. I realize that and I understand that that's gonna fall on the negatives. So we'll talk more about that next week. So for today, this is where it's really the kids that are loving it, the kids that are thriving, and that are really getting something from these classes and look forward to it. So first and foremost, a smaller class size. You can have as small of a class size as one. Some teachers, you, you can charge more if you do a one-on-one -on -one class. So one-on-one -on -one tutoring tends to be a little pricier because you don't have other students you know, filling that cash bucket at the same time. Your sole focus is on that one student for however long the class is, 30 minutes, an hour. Where if you do a small group class, let's say you only want five kids in there, those tend to run a little less expensive because if you have all five kids, you might make more than if you made that hour tutoring one-on-one. -on -one. But there's also the ESL platform, which I talk about a lot because it's where I have my main experience. And that's one-on-one -on -one for the most part. There are some classes, some platforms where it's not like Palfish. And I'm not even sure if Palfish is still around, but Palfish was very much small group. And when you think about VIP kid, they were kind of moving. They had small groups as well. And when I say small group, I only mean like three, three to five. Five is really the higher end of a small group. So these kids that need this attention or thrive in smaller groups, really benefit from these online platforms because they can find a teacher that resonates with them and has a class size that fits for them. I always thrived better in small group um, environments. Even as a kid, like big old spaces, I always have to hype myself up for it. Like I have to know it's coming. So in the classroom, I always spoke up more when it was a smaller group. And that's the same for some of these kiddos as well, is they have that empowerment and that ability to learn the way they learn and to learn how they learn and to kind of make that notice about themselves. 
They also learn how to, I'm looking at my notes over on my other screen. They learn how to connect and communicate with others from different countries and backgrounds. So if you think about a small group, let's talk about our school, they're global. You could have students from everywhere. And I always like to use the first couple minutes of class just to kind of do some introductions. And if I've had these kids before, I like to have them talk about their day or something they're excited about. And that gives them a chance to share about who they are and their culture as well. So if you have a student from the States in a class with a student from the Middle East, we can talk about favorite foods. We can talk about the weather. The weather in the Middle East can be vastly different from a student living in Washington State. And so I really like to kind of bring these in while maintaining as much privacy as possible. Always remember to tell your kiddos, hey, do not tell me your city. Do not tell me exactly where you live, but I would love to hear about your state. I would love to hear about the vacation you're excited about. That especially is really good because it doesn't give anything, right? I'm going to Disneyland and here's why I'm excited. Or I'm fasting because it's Ramadan and this is what that is. These are great times to learn about other cultures and how to talk to them as well because they're not scary. Even though you maybe never met someone, they're kids too. They're humans too. So I think that's a really big positive is you get this opportunity. To, you get this opportunity to talk to students, kids your age, all over the world. And as the teacher, you get to facilitate that. And once you see it, it's amazing. They get these excited eyes to come to class every day. And they're so excited to talk to their new friend halfway across the world. And it sometimes even parents chime in and ask to share some personal information, like an email address, because they want to be pen pals. And that's something for you to facilitate and for you to decide, especially on different platforms. But it's just a lot of fun watching those friendships blossom, even if they're from different cultures. And then another point that's really positive is they get to learn skills that might not be prevalent in their area. So I think about where I live. I live in Oklahoma. It's kind of rural. There's we live pretty close to Oklahoma City, but we have to drive into it. So we're kind of in a rural com community. So when I think about the skills that I need for the city, they're different to the skills I need here. So let's talk about New York City, right? On a massive scale, they have so many things I don't have. And the first major one, the subway and ferries, right? Oklahoma is landlocked and we don't have anything like a subway. So... I can learn how to use the subway. I can learn how to take the ferry to the Statue of Liberty. So I have these opportunities to learn and study from someone who is an expert, maybe someone who lives there, rather than just trying to pour over maps that are online. And as a kid, that's great. And I know kids aren't gonna be probably looking at subway routes and times and schedules, but you get the point. The students are learning something that they're not going to find anywhere near them. I'm thinking in my neighborhood, I can't think of any cooking classes. If I wanted to learn how to cook, I can find a class. You can teach it. You know how to cook cannolis because you're Italian. How cool would that be to make an Italian based cooking class like just desserts like cannolis and tiramisu, whether it's for grownups or kids. You see where I'm talking about? Find your expertise and go for it because that is not prevalent where I live. <laughs> and then another one, we can give students, you can give students or and parents can give students control over their extracurricular activities. So schools are pretty limited on their extracurriculars and the smaller the school, the less availability they have. So my high school was brand new when I started. My freshman year was its second year open. I was its first full class, the second full class. And I think about my electives, I had apparel, home ec, sports, obviously, if I was into sports, but I'm not because I'm teaching online, right? No, just kidding. Um, and I think about like sports, especially, we didn't have wrestling at my school and we turned into a giant school. By the time I graduated, we were 5A. So you think about where you are in school is limited. Like if I wanted to get into wrestling, that's the first extracurricular I can think of off the top of my head we didn't have. I couldn't because we didn't have anything for wrestling. We had a technical school that had things for if you wanted to be a hairdresser or a cook or a lawyer or a teacher, which I did. 
but we didn't have any wrestling. So if I wanted to learn wrestling, I would have to go online and find a class. And back when I graduated 12 years ago, online learning wasn't a thing. Online learning is booming now, and it would be so much easier to find wrestling now than it would have been 12 years ago. So students have the option to really customize their extracurriculars. And even though they're taking these extracurriculars at school, and those still are probably mandated, they can find something extra to do on their own time. Like friendship bracelets. I've told you I taught how to make friendship bracelets. You're not gonna learn that at school. You might learn it at summer camp, but I never went to summer camp. I learned it from one of my friends. And that's exactly what teaching online is. You are taking your expertise and teaching it to your students, your friends, if you will. So this gives them the chance to pursue passions that might not ever get the chance to get checked out otherwise, especially if they live in really small towns and they don't have those opportunities close by, it's too far of a drive. And then finally, we, your students will have the freedom to find, this, to find the teacher that fits them. It's a hard pill to swallow as a teacher to recognize that you're not gonna be the greatest fit for every teacher. Some teachers really like to lecture and that's their teaching style, but not everyone learns that way. Some teachers really like group work, but not everyone learns that way. Some teachers are really hands-on and they have hands-on things that students do with their hands, but not everyone learns that way. So you have to recognize as a teacher that you are still great. You are a good teacher, even though little Bobby might not be learning from you as best as he could. And that's where the challenge comes in as any sort of teacher, especially as an online teacher, you have to recognize that little Bobby might be a visual learner and you're doing a lot of just like lecture based stuff. That's when you kind of tweak your already created lesson. If you haven't done this already and you haven't pre-planned for it, you're new, it's okay. That's when you add something visual for Bobby, something he can print out, something he can create to help him learn. And that's how you appeal to the masses. You really think about all the different learning styles and how you can cater parts of your class to each one so they all get something beneficial to them. So then the freedom to find their teacher is just the most freedom in the world. I want you to think of back to college. When I was in college, let me tell you, every time I had to pick a new, my new semester schedule, I scoped rate my professor. Let me know if you scoped right my professor. Like, let me know in the comments or shoot me an email or something because I know I couldn't have been alone. And if there was a teacher that was known within my major for being like a hard nose or like known on rate my professor, then I kind of tried to avoid that teacher. And you know, it wasn't perfect. I couldn't always. But that's what it is, right? Why can't we grant these little students the same thing? Let me tell you, that made my college experience so much more memorable because I got some really good teachers. I think fondly on some of my professors because I just learned so much from them, even though they didn't always teach to my learning style, right? They were awesome in and of itself. And that's what you want to be. You want to be the rate my professor where everyone's like, yeah, she's really fair. Or she really noticed me. She creates her lessons so that every learner is recognized and that's great and that's how students find the teacher that fits for them all right i know that was kind of rambly but as you can tell i love online teaching and i i just love watching these kids learn and grow and that's a lot of the positives i've seen and there's no way that this is all encompassing but it is some things I've seen pretty prevalently and I have had some students come back to me for over a hundred classes. So I've gotten to know some students and how to teach them. And I've gotten to like watch that change in their eyes and it's really great. So stay tuned next week because we are talking about the negatives and you know, it's kind of yucky to talk about, but it's important that we talk about it because I want you to make informed decisions when it comes to whether you want to teach online or whether or in your interactions with your students and how it could be negatively affecting them and it helps you plan as well all right so i hope this gave you something to think about sorry for just the thought vomit about why i love online teaching and chat soon